Hello Lakewood, welcome to Some Good STEM. This is the first edition of Lakewood's SGS. Um, I just wanna say congratulations on making it through five weeks of VO um, educational opportunities. Um, this week, we have something special to share with you. I just wanted to quickly share a few, I've gotten a lot of emails, but a few emails from people who are sending me a lot of their VO projects for STEM. Uh, this first person is Lucas Kopp. He built a putter box game so he could practice putting inside. Very cool, very unique. The next picture is Bryson and his sister, Bryson Eisel, uh, made their own foosball. It looks like a Hawkeye-themed foosball table. That is awesome. I would love to play that. Uh, the next one is Oliver Langling's Walking Water from last week. Uh, he did an awesome rainbow edition of this. Um, he wanted to make sure to tell you, though, that the blue water tastes just like normal water. So thank you for that tip, Oliver. Uh, this one. This is... Uh, Jordan Dreyer's Plinko game. I can't wait to try this sometime. She said she'd let me try it. Uh, this is Mackenzie Foster's Shadow. We did a shadow project with the sunshine. Um, this is Ellie Pryor's mini ski ball game. Looks a lot of fun. Looks like they've got a plastic golf ball in there so you could roll it up and score. And the other person, this is Hugh Scallon's air-powered Lego car. And now I just I've want got... to say thank you to all those Lakewood kids that have been sending me pictures and miniature videos of all their projects and things they've been working at at home for STEM. So if you've not done that yet, feel free to pick one of the activities that I have listed on your Google Classroom for under specials, and feel free to uh, try them out. Send me some pictures of your projects. Today, this is a super fun one, we are going to make homemade lava lamps. And a lava lamp is very interesting. Um, the main idea for this is the concept of density. Now, uh, in particular, things that are more dense in liquid sink, and things that are less dense in liquid float. So this is interesting because um, we are going to be working with oil, vegetable oil, water, food coloring, and some, si some sort of carbon dioxide catalyst. So that is a Alka-Seltzer tablet. Uh, just to let you know, we bought all these uh, items from Dollar Tree here in Norwalk. And this bottle is a fairly large bottle, but it is one of those large soda bottles. It is a liter and a quarter. All right, so here's what we, we're doing, okay? Uh, this is super fun. Uh, here's the procedure, okay? Then we'll talk about the science as you're watching it. So procedure is, to start off, I needed help doing this. So come on over here, helper. All right, so you probably wanna pour the oil over the sink so you don't spill, or at least have some place in case you spill, because pouring the oil in this can be a little bit challenging. So what we're gonna use is I've got a funnel, some sort of funnel, make your own funnel. We're gonna fill this up about two thirds of the way up. So about two thirds, I marked it as about here, a little over half. Uh, it's two thirds of the bottle. So here we go, Dax. Let's start off with this one. Pour that in there, have someone hold it. Okay. There's that one. Go and pour that one now. Okay, nice and easy pour. Whoa, Dax. Okay, so learning opportunity. Number one, make sure your assistant, who's not getting paid for this, <laughs> they can, <laughs> um, can see the oil level so they don't overflow it. Make sure you do this over a sink, otherwise you'll have an oily mess all over the place. Also, you can do any type of container. Um, you can even do it in a glass um, with smaller amounts of oil. You don't have to use this much oil. Um, I will have directions though posted on this presentation of how to do it. So we're almost there. We got a little bit of oil spillage. So by, this, by the way, this is my son Daxton. He is going to be a fifth grader. I forgot to introduce him. So here we go. Let's finish this up, the two thirds mark. 
Dax, make sure you can see the level there. So he's filling the container about two thirds of the way up full of oil. Watch up here so you can see it. Uh, my funnel's pretty narrow, otherwise it'd be a little easier. So he's pouring it in. While he's talking, the one thing that did not come from Dollar Tree is the food coloring. That doesn't mean they don't have it. I don't know if they have food coloring or not at Dollar Tree, but I had, we had some in our cupboards, so we used food coloring from there. Yeah, almost. Getting close. About two-thirds, Mark. All right, so we're good. <laughs> he wants to be exact. Now I'm getting a little... My paper towel fell down. All right, why don't you lift that funnel up? got it right there we'll put it right down in here okay next thing we're going to add a few drops of food coloring what do you want to do red or blue 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 food coloring now you don't have to do too much food coloring you want to be fairly dark but not too dark so let's see here let's put about eight drops in eight or nine Just count them out for me so you can see the so the food coloring is more dense than the oil. So it is, a lot of them are dropping down to the bottom. Thank you, Dexter. Make sure you put the lid back on food coloring. You don't want to get it on your clothing. All right, and the next thing, we're going to fill the rest of the bottle with water, but don't fill it to the brim. Okay? Yeah, I'll do this one so I don't spill it. How about? Now you'll notice what's happening here is the water is collecting where, Dax? Where's the water collecting? At the bottom. At the bottom, and it's also forming some bubbles. Some air bubbles. Getting closer, getting closer, getting closer. Don't want to fill it all the way up. All right, you'll notice what's happening here is because of density, the oil is less dense than water. So the oil is collecting at the top and the water and some of the oil bubbles are on the bottom along with the food coloring. Now, if we let this settle for a little bit, some of the bubbles will go away. Okay, so I think that's what we'll do really quickly. We're back. We have let this settle for about five minutes and you'll notice that the the food coloring mixed in with the water. It is pretty dark, so eight drops might be too much. Um, the oil is on top. The water is all that's blue. Now, the food coloring is more dense than the oil, so it went all the way to the bottom. Now, we need to add something. Um, Alka-Seltzer tablets. Now, Alka-Seltzer tablets um, help you settle on like upset stomachs and things like that. Um, do not put these in your mouth. Make sure you have a parent to help you. Now, the bottle is... If you had a container that had a bigger opening, you could just drop this in. But the bottle, it's pretty narrow. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, we're gonna break it in half. Now the directions I found says half is fine, but I like to go big. So we're gonna put the whole thing in here. So Dax, here we go. All right, Cam, just wait. We'll get the camera person zoomed in. All right, Dax, drop both of those in there, see what happens. So it sank, meaning it's heavier or more dense than water. And you can see there's something happening here. We're starting to bubble up. You can see some of the colored bubbles are coming up. Creating kind of a lava effect. So before the Alka-Seltzer dropped in the bottle, the oil floated. Um, oil floats because it's less dense than water. Oil and water don't mix because water molecules are not attracted to the oil molecules. So when the Alka-Seltzer tablet is dropped in oil, it sinks to the bottom because it's more dense. Um, the water In the water, the tablet started to dissolve and the chemicals in the tablet react with each other, creating bubbles of carbon dioxide gas, or CO2. When enough gas enters an area of water, the water and gas combination floats up because and becomes less dense than the water around it, so it floats up to the water. 
If this water and gas mixture is less dense than the oil, it floats up through the oil too. Since the water is so attracted to itself and not to the oil, the water and gas mixture moves to the oil in a ball shape. Once a water, a ball of water and gas get to the surface, some bubbles of carbon dioxide pop, releasing the gas into the air. When enough bubbles pop, the water and remaining gas becomes more dense than the oil, so the ball of water sinks down through the oil and joins the rest of the water. So basically, CO2 and the water form a bubble. They float up to the top. It pops, letting the CO2 go back, and then the water is left behind and sinks back down. Let's do that again. You want to do it again? Mm -hmm. Add another one? All right, let's add another one. All right. Here you go. Let's see if it still works. Now, you can put the lid on this and save it and kind of keep on doing this experiment. I don't know how long it'll last. That'll be kind of fun to find out, though. The reason I like bottles is because you can put the lid on it and keep the spill kind of contained. Should we go big? Let's go another one. Mm -hmm. There you go. Max it out. What do we got down there? Whoa. What would happen if we covered this up? It might build up some pressure and pop all over the kitchen. It's definitely building pressure. You don't want to do that. You can feel it building pressure. If you wanted to do that, I'd do it outside. Look at that. That's awesome. We have homemade DIY lava lamps. Now ask your mom and dad what a real lava lamp is. Some of you might even have one at home, a real lava lamp. Behaves similarly only with the addition of heat. What do you think? Awesome. It is pretty awesome. This is STEM for the week. Good job, Daxton. Notice how some of the tablets folded to the top. Wonder why that happened. Did they, are they more dense or less dense than oil? Less no. dense. Yeah, less dense. They folded up. Something happened where they're less dense. So yes, note to self, leave the lid off or you're going to build up enough pressure where it's going to pop and probably go all over the place. So if you're going to do that, I would do that outside. Have a great week. I'll see you at Lakewood this week when you pick up your stuff. Well, this has been our first edition of SGS Some Good STEM. I'm signing off with Mr. Hughes. We will see you later.